Hello everyone, welcome back. Professor Cameron here. And what we're going to be going through today is shaking off uh, some of the rust. And we're going to be running through modeling this piece here. Now, this is a fairly simple component. What this is designed to do is just get us all back reacclimated with SolidWorks and uh, familiar with some of the tools. We're going to start off pretty basic uh, in the beginning of this course and then through the remainder of the semester we're going to start making more and more complex models. But what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this shape here. Now whenever we create a model one thing we want to do is before we start modeling we want to take a look at this shape and sort of figure out how we're going to model this. What we want to do is we want to take a look at it and break it down into the base components that comprise this shape. Uh, and what we see is this is essentially an L bracket, another L bracket, a triangle that we cut, and a hole that we cut here. And that's pretty much how we're going to focus on uh, creating this. So what we can do is just like we always do, uh, we can create a new part file. And whenever we create a new part file, we're going to set our units. And we're going to set our units to inches. We're going to be working in inches for this part. Now, what we're going to focus on is sort of this right half of this shape. We're going to draw this L bracket out. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and select our front plane and create a new sketch on that plane. What we're going to do is we're going to draw the shape, we're just going to rough this shape out, and then we can go ahead and smart dimension it afterwards. So we're going to start at our origin, let's draw a line straight up, over, down, and we're just going to draw out an L shape. Right like that. Now when we draw our shape, one thing we want to make sure is that all of our vertical lines are perfectly vertical, and all of our horizontal lines are perfectly horizontal. And one quick way we can check that is through relations. You can see right here a lot of these lines have little green boxes next to them. Those are, as we remember, relations, and they constrain the line without necessarily adding a dimension to it. This one here is a horizontal relation, and this one here is a vertical relation. What we, want to do, what we want to do is go ahead and add those relations to all of the lines on our part. So you can see this line right here isn't quite perfectly vertical. I'm going to select this line and select Make Vertical. And I'm going to do that for this line right here as well. You guys can go ahead and apply that to your parts where needed. Next, what we're going to do, once we have the relations set, is we're going to get this into the approximate proportions for our uh, shape here. You can see I've drawn this a little too fat up here. This might be a little too long out here. So we, while we're still in this undefined state, we're just going to take this and sort of drag it into a shape that looks more or less like we're doing it. This is going to help with dimensioning that we're going to do in a second. Now once we have our shape, pretty proportional to how we expect it to look, we're going to add smart dimensions. What we're going to do is dimension the two legs of this L, and then we're going to dimension the thickness of it. And we're going to dimension the legs at two inches. And we're going to give this a uniform thickness of three quarters of an inch, 0.75. Right like that. Now once we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and extrude this. Our sketch is fully defined and we can tell that in two ways. Down here next to our status bar it says fully defined and our sketch has turned from blue to black. So once we have our sketch fully defined we're going to go to features, extrude boss base, and we're going to extrude this to a thickness of two inches. Right like that.
Now, as always, when working in SOLIDWORKS, you want to save frequently. So you're going to go up here and just go ahead and save this. And you can save this uh, however you guys feel like saving it as. Now, once you've saved this, let's assume we want to go ahead and alter some of those dimensions that we put on. Right? The way we edit dimensions in SOLIDWORKS is by coming over here to our left-hand side. We're going to right click on this and we have two options right here, edit feature or edit sketch. Edit sketch allows us to edit anything we set in the sketch tab when we drew it. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change these from 2 to 2.5. and we can click OK or Exit Sketch. Now it's gone ahead and grown the legs. Edit Feature, this first icon here, allows us to edit anything we set in the Features tab, namely our extrusion distance. We're going to change our extrusion from 2 to 2.5. Right like that. Now, once we have our left-hand side, or I'm sorry, our right-hand side, what we're going to do is go ahead and focus on this left-hand side. Now, we're going to model this more or less exactly like we just modeled the right-hand side. In our sketch, or in our part, we're going to select this top surface right here, and we're going to create a new sketch on that surface. We're going to grab our line tool, and just like we did before, we're going to go ahead and rough out this shape. Right like that. Now this shape is actually hovering in space right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, after we dimension this, extrude this straight down. Now, just like we did before, we're going to make sure that all of our vertical lines are vertical and all of our horizontal lines are perfectly horizontal. We're then going to manipulate this into the approximate dimensions that we need and the approximate proportions that we need. And then we can go ahead and smart dimension this. Two point five for the legs and a uniform thickness of point seven five. One thing that's important to remember be sure when you're drawing this to include a solid line segment right here. If you leave this open, SolidWorks will not be too happy when we go to extrude it. This needs to be a solid line. So right now we've got our sketch, it's fully defined, so we can go ahead and extrude this. We're going to go to our Features tab and Extrude Boss Base. What we're going to do is instead of doing a blind extrusion, we're going to do Up to Surface. That's going to take our extrusion and extrude it up to a surface that we specify. In our case, it's going to be the bottom surface of this first L bracket that we made. Right like that. Before we click OK on this, one thing we want to check is that Merge Results is checked. What that's going to do is it's going to take these two solid objects and merge them together to create one object. We can go ahead and click OK on this, and you can see how it merges them together. If we don't have merge results checked, you can see it's treating these as two separate objects. That can give us issues with our mass and our volume, depending on how we've modeled our part. 
So for the most part, we always want to keep that merge results checked. Or I like that. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and save your model. What we're going to do now is go ahead and cut the hole on this surface right here. So we can go ahead and select this surface and create a sketch on it. And we're just going to grab our circle tool, place it approximately in the middle, like that. We are going to smart dimension this hole to have a diameter of 0.75. We are going to dimension from the center of the hole to this edge, this right side edge, at 3 quarters, 0.75. And then we're going to dimension from the center of the hole to this back edge at 1.25. So right like that. Again, our sketch is fully defined. Now to remove this material, what we're going to do is we're going to do extrude cut. Extrude cut tool works just like a cookie cutter does. It's going to take our sketch and push it right through our part. Now when we deal with holes or anything that we want to go all the way through our piece, Rather than doing a blind cut, we're going to do through all, right like that. And then we can select OK. And finally, all we have left to do is to set the angle of this cut here. We have to put this angled cut in. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this surface and create a sketch. We're going to grab our line tool. And starting from this top left corner, we're just going to draw the three segments to make a triangle. Now when we draw this, you'll notice this point right here. This is called a midpoint. This exists in the middle of this line. What we want to do is draw it just short of that midpoint. If we snap it onto this, it won't allow us to change the dimension because it's set to the middle of this line, which is at 1.25. So we're just going to go slightly short of that. We're going to come down, and there's a midpoint on this line as well. We want to be sure to avoid that one as well. And then we're going to go right back up here. To dimension this, we are going to smart dimension this top line that we drew at one inch. And then we're going to set the angle here. We're going to use smart dimension and set the angle here to 45 degrees. And we do that by selecting smart dimension selecting this line here and this line here and SolidWorks knows to give us an angle. Once we have that our sketch is fully defined again. We can just verify that it's fully defined. So now to cut this out. We don't want to use a blind cut and we don't want to use a through all cut through all cut will cut all the way through this model. So what we're going to do instead is up to next. What up to next does is it takes our cut and cuts it up to the next intersecting surface, which would be this one here. We can go ahead and select OK. And now our model is complete and matches our finished model. 
the only thing we have left to do on this is to set our material. For that, we're going to come over here to our left hand side. We're going to right click and select Edit Material. And we're going to set this to AISI 1020 Steel. Once we've got our material set, we can go ahead and save this model. Now to check your mass properties for this, the mass and the volume, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Evaluate and then select Mass Properties. If you guys have any questions on this model, please let me know. And as always, have a nice day.